progress in life is detained when attention to details is ignored. Very important. It's a major part of, ex of excellence. Other people are passing, but you place your hand on the table and you saw that there was dust on that table. And you couldn't leave it like that. Everybody is seen, but you saw that there was cobweb on the wall. And you decided to remove the cobweb. Everybody walked and passed, but you saw that piece of paper on the ground. And you know that it's not where it should be. It should be in the trash can. In the garbage can. You picked it from the ground. It makes a world of difference to your life and your destiny. It may appear like you are just doing extra things originally, but eventually it will make a world of difference. We say little hinges swing big doors. Minor things, minor details are the precursor for major differences. Do you understand that? The difference between the ordinary and the extraordinary is the extra. Ordinary people do ordinary things. Extraordinary people do extra things. Ordinary people do normal things. Extraordinary people do extra things. They go beyond. They, 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 they go beyond. They, they go the extra mile. They pay attention to details. That was what happened in the camp of Israel in front of the Philistines. When David arrived and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Everybody saw that it was a normal thing. It was very normal to them. The man was speaking. It was normal, but not to this guy. It, it was, it was who is this one that should defy the armies of my God? Attention to details. It's the number two force or pillar in the adventure of excellence. Number four is intolerance of mediocrity. In intolerance of mediocrity, you refuse to tolerate mediocrity, to live an excellent life or to excel in life, you must be intolerant of mediocrity. You must be impatient with mediocrity. You must be allergic to average, average existence. You must be averse to substandard operations. You must refuse to manage anything that is not the best. You refuse to manage it. You refuse to manage it. You refuse the language of this is good enough. You refuse that language. That if it is not the very, very best, it is never good enough for the king of kings and the lord of lords. If it is not the very best, you refuse that language. In Daniel chapter 1 and in verse 8, the Bible said, And Daniel, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. He proposed in his heart. He proposed in his heart. Hallelujah. He proposed in his heart. He proposed in his heart. And that purpose of heart distinguished him. Are you patient with mediocrity? Maybe you don't want people to be angry with you or maybe you don't want people to think your own is too much or you don't want people to think that you are taking things too far you see conformity is the enemy of destiny where you allow people to conform you to themselves to conform you to their standard and to compel you to agree that what is not right is right then you have limited your destiny the bible said i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of the living god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind conformity is the enemy of destiny and conformity is the enemy of originality it is better i have said all the time it is better to walk alone than to walk with the wrong crowd. It is better to take a stand. Even if you have to stand alone. It's better to take a stand. I mean if everybody sees mediocrity as normal. They walk. Come to the office anytime they want. They are just in and making noise in the office. When they should be walking. They are doing this and doing that. And you made up your mind that you, that, that is not the way to go. 
they may look at you somehow mock at you conspire against you try to think you are the odd one they are the better pe people you know a time will the time comes when those doing wrong are doing it so boldly and those doing doing the right thing are doing it so timidly that the wrong appears to be the right and the right appears to be the wrong but that devil is a liar stand and do the right thing boldly and then and then and then outbolding those who are doing the wrong thing but don't forget what i've just said it's better to walk alone than to walk with the wrong crowd it is important to take a stand even if you have to stand alone conformity is the enemy of destiny conformity is the enemy of quality conformity is the enemy of dignity is a limitation of of of, of, of of destiny must be intolerant it doesn't matter who is patient with average you refuse to be patient there may be people you respect i've been to offices before where people i love respect and value are busy blowing vernacular with their tribal people that's one of the worst things anybody can do for with in, in, in a secular setting where people are there people of other tribes other languages they are there you are speaking across their head to your tribe, all of us. I say, what? I thought this person was educated. I thought this person was civilized. I thought this person understands how to behave. Yes, you can speak your language, but speak it in your house. Speak the one everybody can understand. Where everybody, are, everybody is gathered. And if you are alone with your tribal man, you can speak to him. You see, so it doesn't matter who is behaving substandard. It may be someone you love or someone you respect, you had valued. But you see, you see him behaving. He's eating corn. He throws it out of the car. And you're inside the same car with him. He, he, he finishes a, a wrap of a biscuit or biscuit or whatever it is. He, put, he open one down the glass. Throw it out. Throw it out for who to pick it from the road. What a, what, what a barbaric behavior. Highly uncivilized behavior. There are at times you, you, you've come across people like that who behave in very, very low ways refuse to conform they you may not correct or challenge people like that so it doesn't look personal and if it's someone you can correct you can but if it is not someone you can correct you hate the behavior and make up your mind to do the right thing make up your mind to do the right thing intolerance of mediocrity you must have zero zero tolerance for mediocrity on the journey of excellence intolerant of mediocrity you must be allergic to average you must average existence you must be averse to substandard oppression and then you must come to the point where you refuse to manage anything that is not optimal i prophesy to somebody here this night i declare a change is coming your way god is placing his seal of excellence upon your life his seal of excellence upon your life and changing your life story i'm bringing you to a point where those who knew you before will begin to value and respect you because of your excellence delivery if you believe that shout the loudest amen in jesus precious name that was number four on the forces or the keys we employ in our adventure of excellence number five is continuity of improvement so first of all there must be the decision for excellence and then second association with the excellent and then number four attention three attention to details number four intolerance intolerance of mediocrity number five continuity of improvement the path of the just is a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day we have just said that excellence is not a destination it is an adventure so there is the continuity of improvement you continue to improve on the things you do and that is a major secret of excellence at the introduction we say that everything that is visible and everything that is audible everything that is tangible is improvable anything you can see can be improved anything you can hear can be improved vision can be improved sound can be improved anything you can touch can be improved so you continue to improve them you see 
We said also at the beginning that the largest room in the universe is the room for improvement. So you continue to improve on these things. You continue to improve on these things. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Lift your right hand and say in the name of Jesus, I shall continue to improve on the things in my life. Say the loudest amen. The largest room is the room to improve. If you will not update you become outdated. If you are not updated, you soon become outdated. If you are not updated, you soon become antiquated. If you are not updated, you soon become outmoded. Outdated, antiquated, outmoded. If you are not updated. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We give this example all the time. You see, an ancient house that was built 40 years ago, it was the outstanding shining house then. But today, if you look at it now, maybe there are more fanciful designs now. What was celebrated then uh, can only be a monument today. But um, there are other celebrated structures now. You see, you remember in those days, the 504 of those days, the 404 of those days, you remember those those vehicles with the big nose and remember the, the lorry of those days that they used to wind with the hand and all those kind of things. Today, you, those are th not things that are celebrated today now except for antiquity purposes for some of them. But if you want this journey of excellence, this adventure to be exciting, thrilling and fulfilling, there must be continuous improvement. Continuous improvement is a function of number six, which is called value for knowledge. Value for knowledge. Knowledge, that is number six now on this journey. So continuity of improvement and then value for knowledge. Value for knowledge. Value for knowledge. Knowledge brings new edge. The Bible said, arise, shine, for your light is come. So, Light makes people shine. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. And light equals information. Light is revelation. Light is knowledge. Light is understanding. See? So knowledge, information. They bring distinction. To be lighted is to be uplifted. It brings distinction. People are deformed when they are not informed. People get malformed when they are not adequately informed. You know what they call genetic malformation? Where a child was born with a hand of some fingers missing or with a cleft palate, the nose is open like that or some valves in the heart are not functioning. It is a, it is a, deformation, a disinformation of, of the genetic code some informations are missing on the genetic codon. The information that should have formed that finger was missing. So the child was born with a missing finger. The information on the gene that, would have, that should have formed the bridge of the nose and all that was missing there. And so the child was born with a missing, with a missing bridge of the nose. You see, that, that information responsible to the, for the formation of the ear was missing. So he was born with one ear and the other one is missing. So it is when people are not correctly, adequately informed that they get malformed or deformed. You see, that's, that's, that's congenital malformation and that's malformation everywhere. If your life is not, is not going to be deformed, if your assignment and what to do is not going to be deformed or malformed you must be informed you must be informed so you continue on the on the knowledge journey the knowledge journey you keep on learning you keep on learning you keep on understanding and as you continue to learn as you continue to understand then the adventure of excellence become exciting so what do you do on this adventure of excellence number one the decision for excellence number two association with the excellent number three attention to details number four intolerance of mediocrity number five continuity of improvement number six value for knowledge and number seven diligence of labor diligence of labor excellence answers to diligence it is the diligent laborer that experiences excellent delivery in life the diligent laborer Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 said so whatsoever your hand find it to do do it with your might that is diligence hard work is 
the doorway to high flight in life. Hard work. No one forces his way up without work. No one flies high who does not work hard. You see, when the person comes out with a first class degree, work went in. While other students were partying and going to social club meetings and all those kind of things, social and, and so on, he was buried in work. You see, when you see uh, uh, a, a first class athlete, that person work. I heard of Wilma Rudolph, who worked herself for almost 16 to 20 hours every day, every day for four years before she appeared for the first Olympic. And then, and then the second one, where she won three, the first woman in history to win three gold medals in an Olympic competition. 100 meters dash, 200 meters. And then as the anchor woman for 100, 100 by four, 100 meters relay race she, she won it as the anchor woman she pushed herself you see you do not you do not reach your potentials until you stretch yourself there is no reach without a stretch nothing excels until somebody is diligent you make up your mind to walk to walk to walk no free lunch in life you are going to work hard. You are going to work on structures. You are going to work on organization. You are going to work on order so that it can come out well. I believe it's a new day for someone on this adventure of excellence. And I believe the devil will never have his way in your life. I believe the plan and the purpose of God for your life in this season shall be fulfilled. Stand up on your feet. Give the Lord the praise. Worship him, honor him, and adore him. And begin to appreciate him for this word that has come upon you today word intense word exciting word life-changing word destiny molding word that has come your way today